where it seems that at least for those council fathers, the papal claims aren't necessarily there because they don't have a problem attempting to suspend vigilia. So they don't have, they're not scrupulous about this idea that outside of communion with the Pope, uh, there's no salvation and, and communion with the Pope is communion with the Catholic Church as perhaps the formula of Hermisdus would express it. So they don't seem to be scrupulous in that regard. They don't have a problem attempting to suspend him. But here, here's my thing. Um, I think nobody wins with the Fifth Council <laughs> because the Council Fathers there, I don't think really were upholding the papal claims. I think Vigilius was in favor of them, but he, you know, the Council Fathers don't seem to be. Um, moreover, it seems that they were really being ran by the emperor. So you have here an instance of Caesaropapism in the council itself. So if any uh, ecclesiology wins, it's Caesaropapism for the fifth council. What do, what do you think of, about that? Do you agree, disagree? I agree. Um, and I think most historians I read on that subject, even, even Father Alexander Schmemann, um, who, you know, not many realize, but he was a history professor at St. Sergius Institute in um, in Europe before he, he moved on to be like a more liturgical specialist. Um, even Alec, even Father Schmemann uh, recognized that um, the emperor was really driving the steering wheel and and a number of the, the maneuvers that he made against the church really frustrated the liberty that mm -hmm. belongs to the church because i mean if you take if you take the history before the fifth council so the the council of ephesus the council of chalcedon and then if you take the history after the fifth council so the council of constantinople 681 and then the council of nicaea 787 everybody seems to be singing in one choir that the apostolic see is essential to have an ecumenical council and not just essential like you've got you know five patriarchs and if you miss if you if you're missing one then you're just simply missing one of an equal in a series of equals so we need the fifth one or we need the third one no 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 that's not how they introduce the necessity of the apostolic see they always refer to the Petrine government that was established by Jesus as the reason for why um, the, the apostolic see is necessary. And so it, it just, it's out of sync with the other councils, this particular one, uh, Constantinople 553. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it's quite obvious that uh, Justinian had to depose um, the Patriarch of Alexandria, the Patriarch of Jerusalem. He had to handpick bishops that would lead churches in, in North Africa. And he had to he had to come down with major threats, um, threats to the well-being of these of these men, the clergy, uh, the hierarchs of the East. And, and then, you know, obviously, ultimately, Pope Vigilius. Um, so, yeah, I think I told you before that some of the historians I've read, they, they even look at this as an, an example for why just organized religion is bad, just in, in general, because um, it always ends up being this struggle for power. And where there's a struggle for power, how can we say the Holy Spirit is moving? Um, so yeah, there's, there's, there's no, um, there's no beauty. I don't, I don't say, I don't think in that council, although, <laughs> uh, in 681, the, <laughs> the, the Greek bishops were able to beautify the whole thing as if there was no problem, <laughs> you know, they were yeah. able just to say, you know, Vigilius and Justinian, they both work together as victors over the heterodox at the council of the 200 and so fathers, God inspired fathers. And it's like, they just kind of paper over everything that took place. Now, Vigilius doesn't ever get remembered for his mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think any of the Byz Byzantines brought him up even in the debates. I mean, perhaps Photius, I doubt it because uh, Photius thought Vigilius was one of the holy saints of God. 
in his uh, treatise on the mystagogy of the Holy Spirit. So Vigilius gets remembered of blessed memory by all of his pre uh, su uh, successors. So like Gregory the Great refers to him as of blessed memory. Um, Agatho remembers him as of blessed memory. Um, the only one that ever got remembered for doing something horrible is uh, not even Liberius. Liberius is canonized in the East, um, is uh, Pope Honorius. Oh, wait, before you go, I would really appreciate it if you would consider supporting this channel. This is my primary means to provide for my family, and it also helps me to produce content like this video. If you would like to support me, become a patron by visiting patreon.com forward slash reason and theology. You'll also get access to extra exclusive content when you become a patron. Lastly, hit that like button and the subscribe button, and be sure to leave a comment down below. God bless.